Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you happen to be in the world. Welcome to GrimCon 06 and my talk on all the data and why death by alerts and logging is bad. So who am I and why should you care what I have to say? Well, I have over 25 years of IT and security experience. I started on a Tandy 486 that we got from Radio Shack. If anybody remembers those, I upgraded to a whole eight megabytes of RAM, got into DOS shell to play Duke Nukem, and I've been traveling ever since, going down this path. Uh, first and foremost, I am a father to my three beautiful children. I have two boys and a girl, ages seven, four, and three. I am a husband to my beautiful wife for the last 10 years. I am a retired Army veteran. I recently retired. I spent the first 15 years of my career doing help desk, network ops, enterprise ops. Last five years, I moved into cybersecurity, where I was the lone cyber analyst for my unit. For those without a military background, think about it as a small to mid-sized organization, about a thousand people. <clears throat> um, I did compliance analyst, jack of all trades, master of none. I am a part-time security researcher. I do have a full-time job with Tanium. I'm an enterprise service engineer, and my focus is on security operations. I'm a lifelong learner. Uh, I love learning new things. I try to learn something new every day. Um, you can see some of my certifications on the right. I love knowledge, uh, huge history buff, both military and regular history. But enough about me. This is all about you and why you're here. We're going to go on a journey today. We're going to talk about where we are today with log event collections, uh, the data you need, how to make your data more effective, and really we're going to focus heavily on how to reduce alert fatigue. So over the next 25-ish minutes, we're going to talk heavily on these topics. So where we are today. Alert fatigue is real, folks. Like if you are a SOC analyst, a responder, anybody that has ever done any type of work in this realm, you know it's real because we collect way too much data. Data we don't need, events we don't need, all kinds of FUD that come from our firewalls, network devices, and everywhere. So, I have a screen capture that I pulled down from Security Onion. This is Squeal. Um, if you're not familiar with Security Onion and Squeal, Squeal provides a pane of glass, one pane of glass for all your, your events, but it could be your Elk Stack, your Splunk instance, whatever seam logging device that you're using. When you come in on your workday, you don't want to see that little button over there. You don't want to see it that small. But why does it get so small? Again, we collect thousands of events and we don't need that many events. You don't want to see that because you know you're going to have a bad shift trying to go through all those events. <laughs> so why do we collect so much data? Well, there could be a multitude of reasons. But the two primary ones we are going to focus on is usually we collect too much data for regulatory and compliance, things of that nature, and management decisions. Because in today's world, every corporation or every customer doesn't want to be the next target. They don't want to be hit by the next ransomware. So management will sometimes make the decision that we need to collect all this data to make us to make them feel safe that all that data will provide better incident response and that's just not the case going through thousands of alerts trying for your, trying to find what your responders need it just makes life difficult again way 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 too much data is collected and passed into our scenes and it provides little to no value Compliance. It's out there, folks. Like 
you're not going to get rid of it. It's, it's just a thing that is going to keep getting worse. So much compliance. If you work in commerce, you have to deal with PCI. If you have European partners, you have GDPR. If you work in the Fed space, you have the cybersecurity maturity model, FISMA. If you work in medical, you have HIPAA, ISO 27001, the international standard. And these are just a few that I've listed, but there are over 150 regulatory frameworks out there. I pull that from Secure Controls Framework. They have a nice Excel sheet that breaks it all down. If you are an auditor and you have to deal with this, more power to you, because there are so many compliant, compliantory regulations out and more and more coming out every day with the next attack or the next thing that pops up there's usually another compliance piece that follows it. So we have to collect that data. Breaches. Breaches, again, hard to prevent. Over 5,200 breaches last year alone. And more and more, we're not out of 2021 yet. So who knows? Colonial Pipeline. We all heard about that one all over the news. Everyone's favorite video game watching social media mechanism, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Kroger, Volkswagen, Al Audi. <clears throat> Breaches happen. And they happen every day and more and more. And with everyone's favorite new friend out there, Log4j, there have been no breaches that I know of major breaches reported due to log4j but it's coming like we can we might as well just accept the fact that it's coming and we just need to be prepared for it if you want to look at all the breaches go pull the verizon breach report it's a good model it's good reference so you can track all your track the breaches and find out more about them So why don't I need all this data that I'm getting? I'm getting thousands upon thousands of thousands of alerts every day. Why don't I need it? Well, you don't need all the data because there's only a small subset piece that can really be useful in an incident response. Now, you need to make sure you have that subset piece. You want quality data not quantitative data and in today's environment we've seen a lot of just quantity not quality so for your incident responders to be effective you need to make sure you're providing them quality data and you get that by having quality alerts quality logging too much data slows down our tools and increase in latency and as we know Time is money. Internet speed is money. Ask Amazon how much money they lost a couple weeks ago. If you work, especially if you work in the commerce area, your network goes down, you're losing money every single second that that network goes down. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want to push all that data across your network. And we process a lot of useless data. You, you do. You don't need to know when every time somebody goes to Google. And it increases false positives. It takes time from the analyst <clears throat> to siphon through that data. And if they report something they believe to an incident to the responders, it takes the responders time. And false positives take time away from something that could really be going on in our network. So again, and I'm going to repeat myself, quality over quantity. These are things that we need to make sure happen. But now, how do we do that? How do we handle compliance management? And like I said, this is a journey. We're, we're traveling. We're going to get there. So I'm not at, if you're an analyst, 
you're an IR guy, you're a threat hunter. I'm not asking you to know the compliance regulations, but you should have an understanding of what those regulations are and the type of data you collect with those regulations. So you have the understanding so you can talk to your management team, sit down with your auditing team and your legal team and say, hey, are we collecting everything that we require or are we collecting more? And if we are collecting more, do we really need it? Like all we're doing is filling up space and getting useless alerts. You don't wanna collect more than is required unless it's a customer ask. It's all about your customer and your environment. Again, these are methods that I have used. They may not be right, of the right way there's no one right way but try to trim down your compliance and if you can store it somewhere else store it in aws instance store it in azure store it in a server it can always be there if you need to go back and reference it for an incident but try not to push it into your scene because you want to cut down on those noisy alerts that keep coming in just for compliance sake Management, the human element. So what can we do about management? Well, we gotta have those hard conversations with managers and say, look, there's too much. Like, I can't go through a thousand alerts a day. The team can't go through all these alerts. We're having false positives. We're taking too much time. But also while you're having that conversation, find out what management's end goal is. Maybe there's a reason they have, they're have they collecting all the data. You find out that end goal and try to meet in that middle ground you need to reduce your alerts for quality alerts. But Brian, what do I do about that one manager that just won't hear it? We need all the data because I say we need all the data. Okay, so in the military, the trick I learned was you have to show them them upper managements and them C levels the metrics because it's hard for someone to argue with data. Like they may want to, but if you show it to them in black and white, they can't argue with it. So take your team, do your due diligence, and say, for instance, say, for example, you have a Splunk instance and it's costing your company $3 million annually to run this Splunk instance. You do your due diligence, try to you see what you can take out, what's effective, what's not effective, and go back and show up for management, present it to them and say, hey, if we cut down this, we're still effective. Actually, we're twice as effective because we're not taking our time. We're not taking up too much time going through noisy alerts and we can save our customer X amount of money and then take X amount of money and turn it into your training budget. But always remember, you sometimes you have to show why your way is more effective, that your time is money, and metrics and data. It's hard to argue with those things. They may try, but it's hard. So this is a method, again, it is one way to do things. It is a three-step method. It is not by no means gonna be sufficient for everyone. But step one for data collection and how to reduce your alerts and your noise. <clears throat> Start with logging and tagging your compliance data. Now that you've talked to your compliance team and your legal team and you found out exactly what you need, tag it and bag it. No more, no less. And if you can again, get it out of your scene store it somewhere else and that'll help reduce the noise once you've got your compliance and your regulatory alerts and logs set you move on to step two you switch to logging for intrusion detection purposes and i've listed a few examples detect what's a log incident response malware Windows security, there's thousands and thousands of references out there. 
and I have more later in the slide, but find out what works for you. Find out what works for your customer because that's the end goal to support your customer. <laughs> and once you do that, focus on your deeper logging, your PowerShell, your command line. Eric Conrad gives a great talk on what to log. Now, I'm extremely passionate about seam tuning and logging. And here's why. Back when I was a young SOC analyst, security guy, we got my brand new shiny software, my seam, vendor agnostic, being seam you want. I installed it, I got it going, and I thought, man, I'm gonna be the world's greatest SOC analyst. I want everything. So, had everything going. I come in the next morning, alerts. I'm surprised the appliance didn't start smoking. So many alerts. Don't even remember exactly how many, but so many. So 12 hours and a bottle of Advil later, I finally got through all the alerts. And I learned that day that failure is the greatest teacher. So I started doing my due diligence, my research, going to Google saying, hey, what event logs do I need? What event IDs? Do I need everything from the firewall? You know, what's gonna make me more effective? So I learned that day that all the data is bad because it makes your eyes hurt and your head hurt. So anyone that's ever taken a security course or anything, this is the first thing know your environment and this is going to come with time and experience you're not going to walk through the door day one as a SOC analyst or an IR and know everything so understand and have patience but understand your common IP space your common ports applications you have in your environments your user naming convention your computer naming convention so if you understand those things and you see those noisy common alerts that come in you know what to look for and you can quickly market and move on market and move on market and move on until you can find something that comes that looks interesting so when i was in i had an alert come across i had two computers talking to each other and we know that's bad like no computers talk to computers right so i went to the firewall guy and I said hey block them well, I come to find out, for those that don't have military background, certain applications that we have do funky things. And it was two computers talking to each other, passing data to each other to push up to a server. And it was for a big exercise. It's very interesting to explain why I did that. But again, I never took the time to talk to my stakeholders the application users and find out why. What do they use? What are their ports? I learned a lot that day. Talk to everybody, all your stakeholders. Understand your critical assets. You know, so you know, hey, my server's called this and I'm seeing a lot of funky stuff going to that server. So you can hone in on it, maybe do a little bit more analysis and try to learn your network and applications as good as your red team. You know, volunteer for purple team engagements. They're really going to help you focus and find out what you need. Make friends. You know, reach out to your stakeholders, as I said earlier. And why do you do that? Because if you know what your firewall is trying to collect, if you know what your EDR is trying to collect, what their purpose is, what they actually need, what your IR team needs to be successful, they can cut down on the noise. You can cut down on the noise. It's all about quality, as I've said. Quality, quality alerts in your scene. And if you know what they need, you can help facilitate that. You don't, we all try to be in a silo. You don't need to be, this is a team effort. That's the only way we're going to stop threat actors is if we all work together. So talk to your teams and they can see, tell you, hey, this is what we're blocking at the firewall. This is why. This is what you need to look out for. And it'll make you a better analyst. 
be a part of the community. You know, give a talk, go to conferences, InfoSec social media. If you're not on social media and you need somebody to follow, go to my Twitter handle. I follow a ton of InfoSec professionals and they are, you know, always open for questions and things like that. This community is willing to help. Go to conferences. You're doing that right now. You're doing that right now. Involve. Hey, put yourself out there. This is my first talk. You know, if you know something, build a talk on it. You'll probably learn something along the way. I did. I learned a lot, a lot more than I thought I knew. Check out Iron Geek. He does a lot of with puts out a lot of information about blue team and red team. And all of this, doing all this, talking to people, hey, what do you do in your environment? What do you do in your environment? Will help make you a better analyst and help solidify your environment. Lab, 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 lab. If you are in the cybersecurity field and you do not have a lab, you're probably not doing it right. And I'm not saying you need a massive Dell server farm lab, no. But you should at least mimic what your company has. Go on eBay and get you a, a cheap refurb server and try to build it out as best you can. With it's Splunk, Elk, QRadar, any vendor. Throw you a couple clients on there and go, go get Atomic Red Team or Caldera and practice your craft. Run those attacks so you know what those events look like and you can hone in and tune your systems at work. You are playing the ultimate nerd sport. And if you don't think the offense is practicing, you're wrong. You need to practice your defense too. So, as I said, more resources. Uh, this is very SANS heavy. I am in no way promoting SANS. I know their courses are very expensive, but they do have a lot of free, good information out there. They have the Blue Team GitHub, their cyber defense and training resources on their website, and the SANS Blue Team Wiki. All fantastic free resources. And right now and for the foreseeable future, I believe most of their conferences are virtual and free. So if you get a chance, check them out. SANS is, is a great tool. Continue your quest for knowledge. Lifelong learner. It's it's one of the traits you need to have in this business to keep up with things that are going on in the world. There are thousands of resources. These are a few of my favorites. Uh, the Blue Team Field Manual, the Blue Team Handbook. It's really good for SOC, seams, and threat hunters. All these books are very small. Um, fit in a desk drawer, fit in your go bag. The operator's handbook has a lot of red team, purple team, blue team, a little bit of everything. Fantastic book, fantastic book. And the last one, the Hacker Playbook series. But Brian, you've spent all this time talking about blue team, why hacker? Well, these books give you kind of a guideline if you've never read them, kind of a a model of how red teams and ATPs do their thing. And if you lab that and you read it and you practice it, you could incorporate that stuff in your scene and in your logs. Again, quality, quality alerts to reduce the fatigue. Because you know, if you put garbage in, you're gonna get garbage out. So those are my tips and tricks. As always, you're gonna hear it. If you continue in cybersecurity or IT, you're gonna hear this and know your environment. Make friends, make friends in your environment, make friends outside of work, because that community knowledge that we all have, you know, somebody out there may have a way that is better than what you're doing it. Lab, 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 I can't say it enough. Lab is where you're gonna practice your craft, perfect yourself, Open source and social media, two fantastic resources. I listed a few, there's hundreds, if not thousands more. And always continue your quest for knowledge. YouTube, read a book, a Udemy course, something. Keep learning, 
keep striving for greatness. These are my social media handles. Um, I'm on Twitter, Discord, LinkedIn. The GitHub's a little light right now. Um, been dealing with <laughs> a lot of stuff, Log4j related. So, but keep your eye out. There might be some blue team stuff coming down the pipe. Um, but if you have any questions after this or later in life and you want to reach out to me, I'm always available. Thank you for attending my talk. I hope you have a takeaway. I hope you learned something. And what are your questions?